Outside of the original, Dick Grayson, I would argue that Tim Drake is the most famous character to take on the Robin mantle. He also came out as bisexual recently, and people reacted about the way you expected. Obviously, if you've been on my channel before, then you know that I am two things. One, pro-diversity, and two, a comic book expert. So even though I am surprisingly straight despite all of this, and I don't really have a dog in this race, let's talk about it. The reason why I honestly don't care all that much about this reveal is because I have read a whole bunch of Tim Drake comics. And guys, the dude has had big bisexual energy for years, and this quote-unquote change contradicts literally nothing about the character. Seriously, show me one panel where Tim calls himself straight. Just one. But okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Tim Drake has had a handful of love interests over the years, most notably Stephanie Brown and Wonder Girl. Let's make something explicitly clear though. No amount of dating women invalidates someone's attraction to men. To my knowledge, there's no secret queer council that spies on people's lives and passes judgment on everyone's sexual identity. Or at least, uh, I haven't been informed about that. The thing about Tim, though, is that fans have speculated for years about him being bi due to his intense friendship with Connor Kent, aka Superboy. I will say it is perfectly fine and normal for men to have important and completely platonic friendships with other men. There's nothing gay about bros supporting bros. But Tim and Connor? Yeah, this isn't that. While the Robin and Superboy bromance has been strong for years, it's worth noting that Connor is pretty much the only person that Tim is really comfortable talking about his feelings with, and they have had some pretty sus exchanges. We came here because we're friends, right? You gotta give me a reason to stick around, Robin. Friends. You're smarter than you look. I know. Wish I could do the same. Still refuse to call him by your name. I don't care what costume you or him wears, as far as I'm concerned, you're my Robin, always will be. And you'll always be my clone boy. Why so happy? Let me guess, sail on leather? You're gonna get matching chaps, is that it? Tim? Hello? Okay, now you're creeping me out. Will you say something? Tim, buddy, if you're trying to be all dark and grim now, this isn't going to help. Additionally, there's this scene where Tim has a conversation with Connor inside of a closet while Superboy gets dressed. The book's writer, Judd Whitnick, publicly joked about the scene being an opportunity for them to come out of the closet. Even Harley Quinn insinuates Tim's bisexuality, with him getting a very concerned look on his face. Most notably though, when Connor dies, Tim's entire world is shattered. He donned this new red and black costume, which is widely accepted as being in honor of Superboy's color scheme, and he obsessively tried to bring Connor back to life through cloning. At this point, Tim had also lost his father and Stephanie, but it's Connor that Tim was so desperate to bring back. Even though human DNA is significantly easier to clone, and the main reason that his experiments kept failing over and over and over again was because the Kryptonian DNA was rejecting the human samples. There's also this really dramatic scene of when Superboy leaves the Teen Titans that doesn't read as straight to me. And when Connor was erased from continuity altogether, Tim said that his name, quote, tugs on his heart. Also, are we going to forget the time that Tim sought out fashion advice from the only openly gay member of the Teen Titans, the two of them then stumbled upon a pride parade, and then it was Tim that was the one that suggested they take part in it? His teammates also claimed that Tim made friends with everyone at the parade and was invited to all of the after parties. The only real thing that I could find that implies that Tim isn't interested in men would be this issue of Batman where he goes undercover as a female med student and was pretty embarrassed that he was hit on by a guy. But there's multiple plausible excuses. Tim could be embarrassed because he's cross-dressing. The guy might not be his type. Or maybe he's just in the closet. My friend Faust actually explains this really well in one of his videos. When I say I would like for this character to come out as gay or bisexual or pansexual, or whatever, I'm not saying that I want their sexuality to change. I'm saying that I believe, based on what I've already read of the character, that they are gay, bisexual, pansexual, or whatever, and have been all along, and they're in the closet or have not realized this about themselves yet. And people have argued, well, if you want gay characters or bisexual characters or whatever, why not just make new ones? And I say, yes, we should make new gay characters that just come as gay, but also, we should have existing characters come out as gay because people that you've known your entire life might come out as gay, they might come out as bi. There needs to be a balance to tell the story of LGBT people realistically in comics and reflect our stories realistically. There are characters that I totally think are straight, and if it was revealed that they were just closeted queer folk, then it would be weird. 
I do not hate straight characters, and I don't want them to go away, because being straight is totally valid. I am just as valid as anybody in the LGBT community. However, there are characters that come off as queer-coded and closeted, and in my opinion, and in the opinion of a bunch of avid Tim Drake fans for years, he is one of those closeted characters. Tim Drake is someone that's constantly trying to figure out who he is, and is always rebranding himself with different costumes and personas, like Robin, Red Robin, Drake, and flips back and forth between them. He's by far the smartest member of the Bat family, but he's also kind of dumb when it comes to figuring out his place in the world. While I don't personally have the experience of being closeted, I do have close friends and family that do, and the way they describe it seems pretty similar to this character that I have read so much about. Now, a few extra thoughts. For people that think that this is doing Stephanie Brown dirty or invalidates their previous relationship, hell no. If you're upset because you liked them as a couple, then I get it, I do too. But Tim and Steph have been on and off again for years. While Marvel loves to have their characters hook up left and right, DC loves their OTPs. It's Batman and Catwoman, Superman and Lois Lane, Green Arrow and Black Canary. Tim and Steph are probably going to get back together sometime down the line, and that's totally fair. Being bisexual does not invalidate attraction to the opposite sex. Also, this is just solid representation for DC in general. While they love bisexual women like Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, Wonder Woman, and Talia al Ghul, and so many more, there's not really that much bisexual representation for men. There's Constantine, and that's about it. I think the reveal of Tim's sexuality was handled a lot better than someone like Iceman over at Marvel Comics, and I hope that it's something that's explored more instead of just a one-off mention for some brownie points on social media. There's a difference between making a queer character and having a queer character. Tim Drake is a full three-dimensional character, and while I hope that we do see more of this side of him in the future, I also hope that it doesn't become his entire identity. I'm not trying to say that a character's sexuality can't be a big part of who they are, but it doesn't have to be the defining trait about them. I'm really excited for when a character's sexuality doesn't have to be a big deal, because it shouldn't be. The world is a diverse place, and the media we consume should be a reflection of it. A guy kissing a guy is no more gross or appropriate than a guy kissing a girl, and if that freaks you out, or if your only complaint is the mere existence and or visibility of queer folk, then dude, you're just a homophobe. These people complain about how you shouldn't touch established characters, and you should instead make new diverse ones. But whenever a new diverse character is made, these same people then complain about them endlessly. There is no pleasing these guys, and frankly, they're not worth listening to. With Tim Drake, this is just a moment that a lot of us have been expecting and waiting for for years. I do not care if that bothers you. So yeah, I'm excited for all the usual hate bombing and people to make their hour long responses to this like, what, 10 minute video? But I wanted to just get my two cents out there because people keep acting like this came out of left field. Uh, it didn't. Big thank you to Nando V Movies and Wrestles With Gaming for reading those lines earlier. Be sure to check out their channels because it is some seriously good stuff. And if you want to listen to more of my SJW nonsense, then I have a dedicated playlist with all of my woke garbage so maybe consider giving that a watch. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.